Are you ready? Hey, you think you can tell us what to do? You think you can tell us what to Crack a cold one and sit back and relax, because the Penalty Box Sports Show is finally back. I'm Boomer Sabata, and joining me, as always, is Ryan Sabata. How are you doing today, Ryan? Uh, a little rusty on the pipes. Uh, been little, a couple of weeks. A little rusty. But, yeah, yeah, we had some technical difficulties, let's put it that way. That's why we de- were delayed by 20 seconds. Uh, always like to be prompt. Well, uh, yeah, 20 seconds compared to what? <laughs> it was three weeks ago, our last show, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Technical difficulties, the reason why we started 30 seconds late. Uh, well, okay. Got two weeks worth of stuff, three weeks worth of stuff to talk about, so let's get right into it with the uh, our coveted Shocker Nah segment. Um, I need to get a bell again. What happened to that bell? I don't know. You gave it to Deontay. Yeah, I wonder where that went. <laughs> it probably went with him to El Dorado. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell <laughs> yeah, you. Got to get a new and improved bell. <laughs> All right, so Shocker Nah number one. Uh, any big shocks in the NFL free agency, or did it kind of go as expected? Um, not so much with the free agents themselves. Uh, we saw the free agent quarterbacks go where we thought they would go, like Keenum to Denver, Bradford to Arizona, Teddy Bridgewater to New York. Uh, the one that kind of shocked me was the Bills signing of AJ McCarron, uh, to a two year deal worth 10 million with 6.5 million in playtime bonuses. So that's essentially a two year, $16 million contract. Uh, for a for a guy who's never even started a game, yeah, he couldn't beat out Andy Dalton. So, no. At the same time, I mean, let's Cincinnati's kind of. Um, I mean, they're clinging to Andy Dalton's boot strings. Uh, so I don't really think Adrian McCarron would even get the starting job, even. Uh, but I mean, it, given with the Bengals organization and how, but he still still hasn't started a game. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a a pretty uh, questionable signing, I guess. Uh, it's not questionable. Yeah, Maybe they, the amount of money that they're giving him. I mean, they, he's essentially a backup. They chose, uh, they chose AJ McCarron over Tyrod Taylor is what they, is what they showed with I'm, these. I would be with that move and training of Tyrod Taylor. I would be surprised if Tyrod Taylor even wanted to play in Buffalo. No, I know he doesn't, but I, I, I just don't think AJ McCarron's the answer. They're likely going to try and move up and take someone in the draft. So AJ McCarron obviously isn't the long term uh, answer at quarterback for Buffalo. But as it stands right now, he is the starter. He's going to beat out Nathan Peterman for sure. It depends on where, if the Bills can even move up into the top four draft, either, you know, possibly Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, uh, Rosen, I guess, if he falls. But, yeah, the that Bill signing is really the only other one. The other shocking moves were mostly trades. Uh, I mean, we had... We had the Browns just go absolutely total draft day on yeah, us that yeah, one day. That was fantastic. Oh my yeah. And it, it could still not be over. I mean, we're talking <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. possibly to the Browns. The Giants aren't happy with him. I've, I heard that they're trying to get two first round picks out of him. Well, that's, I think the Browns could do that with ease. Well, that's just an, uh, it's an update. That's not shocking or anything. It's but, just, but yeah, that's not, that's not terrible for a, for a player like Odell Beckham Jr. It's his personality really doesn't fit in well with New York. He's got that big extravagant uh, persona about him. And I mean, with the controversy coming out about the video that showed allegedly what he was doing, I, it makes sense for Odell to go to like a Cleveland or, I mean, they've even talked about him going to the Rams, Ooh, which Boston, yeah. Jesus, Woo! <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, big shock for me was the Rams. And I mean, you talk about just going total draft day. The Rams kind of did that. Yeah. Getting Marcus Peters, now to Dominic and Sue, Aqib Tlaib. I'm missing somebody. Who else did they get? No, that's a, those are the big three. That's, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, imagine getting Odell Beckham in there. I, 
I'd pity Sean McVay. Yeah, I mean, woo-wee. as of right now, they're <laughs> they're the Super Bowl front runners in the NFC. They have to be. Oh yeah, definitely. Based on that roster and how close they came last year, and but just a little, they had no playoff experience. So now, I mean, even though it was only one game, they have that under their under their belts. Goff has gotten there, and the NFC West has gotten weaker. I would say. Yeah. Especially with Seattle, another team who are there, they blew it up. Uh, we'll get to that later, but. Yeah, the Rams got a pretty clear area. And the thing is, with the, the, the thing that the Rams kind of did that other teams kind of get wrong is they were successful beforehand, but they've kind of added to it. They've added to the foundation. Some average teams will try to just get all of these star players all together in a melting pot and expect them to perform well. I don't think that really happens that often, but I think the Rams did it the right way because they're already a good team to begin with. They just kind of added to it. They added a few more cannonballs to the cannon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles didn't lose anything either. I mean, they got Michael Bennett, who, if he can see the field, yeah. he'll be he'll be pretty good for them. And they haven't lost anyone. And they get Carson Wentz back at some point next year. That's That whole Michael Bennett thing is odd. It's strange. Let's see, this dates back to what Super Bowl? I don't know. Uh, oh, I think it was... I don't it was know la- the details. It was last year's Super Bowl because his, Martellus was playing, his brother. And apparently the the woman in the wheelchair was security. Okay. Something yeah. like that. I mean, it's just an odd story. I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked at it recently. Um, I know that uh, Michael Bennett's facing legal trouble because of it. But, uh, yeah, def- that's an odd story, definitely. Um, what about Sherman to the Niners? Yeah. I mean, he negotiated <laughs> his own deal. That's probably the shocking part. But, yeah, that just ties back to Seattle blowing it up. Uh, the 49ers are looking to play for keeps. They've got wild card aspirations. Given, I mean, they can't catch up, catch up to what LA's done, but that that second spot in the NFC West is open for the 49ers to take it. How bad do you think the 49ers are going to beat the Seahawks the first time they play each other? Well, they st- the Seahawks still have Russell Wilson, so I'm not. Well, he can only do they, so much. They can they can win any kind of game. They can win a defensive game, Seattle, which they can't do that anymore because their defense isn't very good, but. Yeah, uh, Aaron Russell Wilson keeps them in games all the time. So, I uh, yeah, I trust Russell Wilson to He'll it, it won't be a blowout. I'm not saying the Seahawks are going to win, but 49ers are not that much better than Seattle. I forgot you don't believe in home field advantage. I don't know no, if the first games at Levi Stadium, but that would certainly help them in my opinion. All right, number 2, March Madness results. Anything shocking or no nah about that? Obviously there's Loyola to Chicago. That's yeah, that's yeah, the first thing. I that's had. the biggest thing. Um, for me, my bracket was just absolutely busted once Arizona lost because I had them in my final four. I put too much trust in DeAndre Ayton. Forgot about all of the drama outside of the court with their head coach and stuff like that. Didn't put that into consideration. Oh, so, that's on you. Yeah, that is on me, definitely. Um, <laughs> UNC getting tarnished was another thing. I mean, that was my champion, UNC, for the third straight year. Well, my, my final four was Arizona, which, uh, let's see, Arizona. I have Michigan in my final four. I had Duke beating KU, so that's gone. And I have Villanova, so I still have two in there. Um, I don't even remember who I had, to be honest. I you had, had UNC winning it. I did. I know I had UNC. But then again, I had Zona winning it, so I think it's I not had that bad. UNC, Michigan State. Ah, oh, Jesus. I don't remember. I haven't even checked. What do you think is the best game so far in March Madness? Like, what has been the best game? Yeah, the best game that you've watched. Well, I haven't watched a whole lot, but that Florida State... Xavier game, that was probably the best. Yeah, that was pretty good. I was watching a Loyola Chicago versus Miami in the newsroom just right across the way. Just a bunch of people just crowded around a computer, and they made it. I just did a giant victory cobra. <laughs> just I didn't say anything. Just stood up like, that's it. I want it. <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely a, a good story. And we'll get to March Madness a little bit later. We don't want to spoil too much. Uh, number three, the current NBA playoff picture. Anything shocking about that? No. The uh, I mean, Toronto the one seed, Boston the two, Cleveland three, Philly four, Indy five, Washington six, Miami seven, Milwaukee eight. That's pretty pretty cut and dry. I knew Cleveland was going to pick it up at the end of the season. LeBron always does. On the west side, I mean, Houston one, Golden State two. Everyone else is just kind of in there. Doesn't even matter what seed they are. For me, the, the most shocking thing is the fact that the Rockets are up by 18 games in the Southwest Division. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous how good they are. And not to brag, but I've witnessed them play in person. Uh, so, yeah, definitely I can, I can back that up, that they are def- certainly that good. I mean, it, it is ridiculous how good they are. And 
And I mean, I, I think they're going to just throw in the Warriors, don't you think? Nope. You don't think so? No. I've been saying it all year. It doesn't matter. It's Cleveland Golden State. Until either LeBron or Okay, is it because you want is it because you definitely think it's gonna be Warriors versus yes, Cleveland or I you do. want it to be? It's going to be. I don't want it to be. Every year they I mean they, they, they make it seem like there's this huge uh transparency in the league between the the best teams. There's not. It's Golden State, they're a super team, and Cleveland they have LeBron. But the thing is with the, the East with the Rockets, they play I mean it, it is kinda like Spurs basketball. It can get boring at times, but it's just so much better i mean you have james harden i think james harden i mean definitely mvp uh chris paul definite hall of fame i think for his work so yeah kind of drew a little bit of a blank of where i was going with that but that you get what i'm saying i still think even with that blank i think that houston's still going to beat the warriors all right the current nhl playoff picture how about uh, those vegas golden knights what about you didn't you didn't believe in them Shut you did, up! You didn't believe what it. Are you talking and now they're, about? they just clinched a playoff spot. What are you talking about? I you never didn't, said. I haven't. You said, said that they were going to fall back down to in Earth. October. You, you said it too. You, you said no, that. You said that no, in January. No, okay. You said that in February. You do not. You did not believe in the Golden Knights. That's BS. I no. never said they were going to miss the. Playoffs. We've got the recordings on YouTube. Do it. Do I want. I want you to bring that back because I never once said Vegas was going to miss the playoffs. I said they'll make it. I said they won't be the one seed. And guess what? They're the three now. So, yeah, I was right. You didn't believe in them. That's BS. They that is complete out of BS. You said that they were going to fall back down to earth. Yeah. For, a te- for an expansion team. So that means dead last. And now no, 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 no. Don't give me no, that. No, 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 no. Don't give me that. No, you're, you're so full of it right no, now. No, no, no. Yes, I swear I'm not full of it. I yeah, would pull you up, are. I would pull up the video right now if I knew exactly where you said that. No, I, I haven't said. I, th- I said in October when they were, when they were hot. I said, yeah. I mean, though, history proves or has, history has shown that they'll they'll fall back at some point. And then I mean, we got to January, and that's when I said, oh yeah, they'll make the playoffs, but they won't be the one seed. And then February came, they were still the one. I said, no, it's they're still not going to be the one, and they're the three now. That's exactly what I said. I You're it. twisting it. No, I'm yes. not twisting it. I'm not. All right, well, how about Boston only behind the Lightning by one point? This is a team that I thought, I mean, with the Lightning, I thought they were just going to run away with the division title, but Boston just coming out of nowhere and competing with them. I mean, I think the Lightning are at 106 points and the Bruins are at 105. Yeah. Something like that. I have no idea where this came from, from the Bruins, but they're playing hot. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, Toronto going to get 100 points. Washington's probably going to get 100. Pittsburgh could finish in the five seed as it stands now. So, But it doesn't matter because they're the best. They're just going to make the Stanley Cup anyway. Hockey they're is, just, a, com- they're hockey just is the, a completely no, different just, entity. Just hockey is a completely different entity. They're, they're just the best team, you know. Oh, that's, you're being so unrealistic and irrational right now. Th- th- that's the same thing with you and the NBA. Because the NBA, you have five players on the court. Clearly, we've seen since LeBron's been in the league, you only need one, one of the best. Well, with the LeBron, e- since he's gotten the, here. With the East, I'm going to say the Cavs are making it. That's not where I'm trying to poke at you. No, but yeah. It's, it's the fact that you say, oh, the Warriors are the best team. They're going to make it. Yeah, because they're the best team. Because they, well, have, I'm saying, they have the five. They uh, have the best starting five in the league. I'm saying That's that, all that matters I'm in saying the that the, I'm saying that the Penguins are, well, I mean, they're the best team. So, you know, they're just going to, it doesn't matter what seed they are. You know, they're just going to make the Stanley Cup. It's it doesn't completely matter. Completely different sport. Completely. All right, then the last, <laughs> last factoid for our. Shocker and awe segment. The amount of big name MLB players getting injured in spring training. There was Bumgarner. There was Turner. Justin Turner. Yeah. Greg Bird. Greg Bird. That one doesn't surprise me. Salvador Perez. Did you hear that? I did not hear he that. He tore his MCL Ooh. slipping while carrying his luggage last night. Four to, we'll miss four to six weeks. It's breaking news to some people, if you're listening. Somebody last night hurt their knee. I can't remember who it was. But it, he was fine. It was a kind of scary because it was a, oh, it was Rafael Devers. Oh. Like they had an inadvertent home plate collision and he hurt his knee, but they said it was fine. So, does it kind of shock you how some of these big name players are just dropping like flies? No. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it happens every year. I mean, we had the Tommy John in, in epidemic a couple of years ago. It's, it's just the way the game goes. Baumgartner got hurt last year. Uh, 
Salvador Perez, that one kind of sucks, but that just tells me it was bound to go anyway. That was just the time it happened to go. It would have been in a game in the first day or two that the season started if it was that week. Justin Turner, it's a freak accident with the pitch in the wrist. So, no, I'm not shocked by it. It's it's the game. Do you think that uh, eventually it's going to be kind of like the NFL preseason where your star players are just going to barely make an appearance in spring training? No. no it, well, that's how it is now for the first two weeks. Well, do you think it's going to be like that for the entire No, month? because you have to get back in the swing of things. It's not like the NFL. It's all getting your coordination back and and getting your eye focused in. The, the training to get like back into season mode for baseball is a lot more strenuous than football. All right. Well, uh, sticking with baseball, opening day, finally, finally upon us. Uh, only a Tomorrow. day away uh, at the time of this recording. Uh, so now let's give a little bit of a 2018 preview for all the baseball fans out there. Finally. I can smell the hot dogs now. <laughs> Had some last night. I, I can, I can taste the cold root beer. Let's put it if, that way. If that's the soda of your choice, then yes. <laughs> All right, but before we get there, I'm going to have give you a surprise pop quiz, baseball trivia. Vladimir Guerrero Sr. hit seven walk-off home runs at Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Three more than the next two players on the list. Who are they? Oh, three more than the next two. Yeah, the, so the next two? two are the next two are tied for with four uh, walk off home runs at Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Jesus Christ, how am I supposed to get this? Hey man, you're a Yankees fan. You you know everything. So it's a Yankee. No, it's not a Yankee. <laughs> Can it's I two, get the teams? Well, they're Expos. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of Expos. Andre Dal- Gar- Andre Dawson Gary and, Carter and Tim Wallach. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. So let's move on from the Expos questions, yeah, since a, you obviously... Yeah, that was a For a Yankees one. fan, you really throw history out the window. All right, since 2007, Felix Hernandez has made the opening day start for the Mariners every year since 08. Except 08. Except 08. Who got the start that year? 2008? Yeah, so since 2000. Chris Young? Nope. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, Hmm. Annabelle Sanchez? Nope. No. Oh. Beans. I don't know. Eric Bedard or Bedard? Eric Bedard. Bedard. Yeah. He was a MLB the show legend back in the Let's day. Oh, here's a good one. Which batter homered in the at bat following Adam Jones's catch? To rob Manny Machado of a home run in last year's World Baseball Classic. We're testing your patriotism. Who is the last batter? Which batter homered in the at-bat following Adam Jones's catch to rob Manny Machado of a home run in last year's World Baseball Classic? So it's not an American. No, but it still involves an American. Is it Edwin Encarnacion? Nope. Nelson Cruz? Nope. Uh, I don't know. Robinson Cano. Oh, Cano. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who was the last player to win an LCS MVP and World Series MVP honors in the same postseason? Madison Bumgarner. Yep. That was easy. Let, let you have a little bit of an easy one because you're struggling. All right. Let's, yeah, let's, Jesus. Let's, let's get to some, some <laughs> modern MLB talk. God, it's 615. <laughs> if I wanted to be quizzed, I would go to sleep and wake up tomorrow. <laughs> well, that was MLB.com trivia. Well, so. No. All right. Well, let's get to some modern. MLB talk is Angels superstar prospect Shohei Otani ready to play in the major leagues. Horrible spring. No. Awful spring. No, don't you give me that. An ERA of 27 in two innings? Yeah, that, that was rough. But and he, he had an he, outing this year he only for the batted, team and w- threw, struck out eight in a row. He had a 125 average in 13 games, too. Yeah, okay. So Just pitch, because you have he one. He can pitch. He can pitch. When you it's have one good spring training. But does that mean that you're ready for the majors? If you're in his situation. Okay, but what happens if it's the other way around? Like, what if some guy who's 19 gets the invite to spring and he hits 450 with five home runs? Is he ready for the bigs? That, I don't think of any. I can't think that that's even possible, a 19-year-old having those kind of stats in spring training. But I'm just saying, if it happens. Well, then you'd have yourself a Bryce Harper or Mike Trout. But is it guaranteed? 
pretty much. No, you're telling me that. Stop it. You're telling me that the, the year that stop Mike it. Trout and Bryce Harper stop wasn't guaranteed it. that they were going to be called up. Called up? Well, those are two very different players. Who Mike Trout? I'm and talking Bryce about Harper? a non-roster invitee. Okay, oh, so okay. like Billy McKinney of the Yankees. He he's having a really good spring. He's not starting the year in the majors. But it's. Just because you do good doesn't guarantee you a spot. And just because you do bad doesn't mean you don't deserve but I, it. I think it's different with Shohei Otani. This is his first season yeah. in American baseball, and he has a horrible spring. I mean, I don't know. I mean, luckily I'm not an Angels fan, so I don't really have to stress over this this much. But, I mean, somebody in his situation, you just got to kind of think of the the mentality of it all. I mean, if Shohei Otani goes out there and completely lays an egg in front of uh, millions watching at home national televised major league baseball game i mean what's worse that or just you know not having a very good outing in triple a he's got the stuff he's got the stuff i'm not denying that i mean i'm not saying that he's a bust no he's not a bust i just think that he needs to start the year in the minors i I, think you're wrong I mean, the stats don't lie, man. You're a stats guy. I'm not. Two I, innings. I trust He's my, pitched two I and trust, two-thirds innings. I trust, I'm not making my decision on that. I trust my gut more than I go to the numbers, and this time I'm going Your to the numbers. Your gut's freaking huge. Well, yeah, that's why I trust it. <laughs> <laughs> and in 13 games, he batted 125. I'm not saying as bad as I just said that. His bat, he, he might struggle to be that two-way player that everyone wants him to be, but from a pitching perspective, he was the best pitching prospect since Hugh Darvish. Okay. So you don't know. But how was you Darvish's spring? His first spring? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> so yeah, I did. He should start in the... Jesus, LA has no one. And plus, how old, was you, how old was you Darvish? He was 23, 24. How no, old is, no, no, he was like 26. How old is Otani? 23. He's 23? Yes. Oh, I thought he was younger than that. Nope. But still, he's younger. So... I'm sticking to my guns. All right. Well, oh, Tony's on my fantasy team. He better be starting. Okay, so season. that's why you're not. No, him. no. I just remembered. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's kind of go to the more positive side of pitching. Uh, who do you think is going to be the starting pitchers for each team, the NL and AL in the MLB All Star Game? The NL, seeing as the game is in Nationals Park this year. Max Scherzer. Okay. I have Kershaw, but it's give or take. And then Chris Sale. Yeah, Chris Sale. That was easy. That's something we can kind of agree on. Yeah. It'll be, nothing out- it'll be either Scherzer or Strauss. Safe picks, nothing outlandish. You weren't saying Luis Severino or anything like I that. I was debating it. You were debating it? Yeah. Well, what are you I'm, talking I'm about? I'm not going to argue about the fact that you debated it. I mean, okay, I, I thought the Noah Syndergaard might start over Kershaw, but then I was like, nah, that's not. Yeah, what's I guess, ridiculous about thinking I Severino? Guess, he was like third in the Cy Young vote. Okay. Behind Sale and Corey Kluber. I'm so. just kind of picking at straws at this point. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to bash for his right. bash. Since everyone loves the long ball, who do you think will be the eight contestants in the home run derby? Uh, Giancarlo. Yeah, obvious. Aaron Judge. Yeah. Bryce Harper, seeing as it's in Nationals Park. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I just said that about two I did, minutes but ago. When I when I wrote down my answers, I didn't consider that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll put Harper instead of Justin Upton. Yeah, just nothing's boring. It's not that, that's I mean, a boring yeah. pick. Oh yeah, like the, they always have to be that boring guy in the home run. Well, I have him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it is Cespedes. Okay, Jose Altuve. Wow. Yo, he's got some pop. He'd be fun to watch in a home run derby. Cody Bellinger. Yeah, yeah, I have Cody Bell- Bellinger. Joey Gallo. I wanted to put Joey Gallo, but I just Jesus, how many did we agree on so far? Two. Let's see: Stanton, Judge, Bellinger. Yeah, only three. So far. And there's Harper. I put Harper in there. And uh, Nelson Cruz. Okay. Well, I have Stanton Judge, Bellinger, Harper, Arenado, Nolan, Nolan Arenado. Okay. He's going to be able to prove that he can hit it hard in a different ballpark, which he can. Everybody knows that, but apparently not the MVP voters. Andrew Benintendi, I no. think, will be in there. No. I think he'll put up some impressive stats for uh, being a second-year player, and I think they're going to put him in there because he's a Red Sox. Did you put Nomar Mazar in? No, I did not put chris davis with a k i think they're going to show him oh, some love A's. yeah <laughs> they're going to show him a little bit of love he's had 40 home run seasons how many times back to back here yeah so i think they're going to show him a little bit of love and joey Votto. i think they're going to put him in there too show, okay. uh, showing the vets a little bit of love i wanted to put mazar or gallo in there but i i don't know i'm just 
I'm a little hesitant to kind of root for the Rangers this year because <laughs> might get a little burned. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Galloway had over 40 homers last year. So. Yeah, but, I mean, it wasn't back-to-back years like Chris Davis. It was his first year. Yeah, granted. <laughs> All right. There's a, there's always at least one team which is average that always starts the, the season hot. Uh, who do you think that's going to be? It's going to be the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays. They wow. start, start out the year against the Yankees. Yeah. Not thinking that's going to go very well for them. But they play Chicago, Texas, Baltimore, and they got Cleveland. And Kansas City with another Yankee series, a Red Sox series, and then back to playing Texas again. So, I mean, that's one, two, three, four. That could potentially be five series wins for them throughout the month of April. So I think based on that, I don't think they're going to contend in the AL East at all, but that's it's a pretty easy schedule to start the year. Uh, I'm going to go with the White Sox. I think the young talent's going to come out. It's going to show the athleticism. They're going to be able to win some games. But then you're going to get to about late April or so, and it's going to start to show that they're inexperienced. So just going to kind of ride behind that young talent the White Sox have. At least they have hope. That's something. Uh, let's see what their schedule is. Uh, start out with Kansas City, Toronto, Detroit, Tampa Bay, Minnesota, Oakland, Houston, Seattle, Kansas City. Yeah, that's pretty easy schedule too. Yeah. Good pick, huh? You going to argue with me on that one? I don't like your sweatshirt. I think you're ugly. <laughs> I don't support Hollister and their brand. I don't care what you think. <laughs> All right, some predictions uh, before we stray off too far. Uh, Cardinals at Mets. Mets. I got the Mets, too. Carlos Martinez versus Noah Syndergaard. I think the power is going to show up in this game, but I'm a little hesitant to say, oh, yeah, we're going to... It's going to be like that all season because it's probably not. Astros at Rangers. Astros. Yeah, I'm going with the Astros on that one, too. Yankees at Blue Jays. Yankees. Yeah, I got Yankees, too. Red Sox. You got the Red Sox and Red Sox at Rays. Yeah. 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 But that, that'll be a good one. Chris Sale versus Chris Archer. That'll be decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. That's, yeah. that's a yearly thing. Yeah, that'll be okay. And Giants at Dodgers. I think this one is the 6 o'clock ESPN game. Dodgers. I got the Giants. Well, you're dumb. They have no I'm not bum. dumb. They don't have Bumgarner. So? Do you even know who's starting for him? No. Okay. <laughs> Do you know who's starting for LA? Kershaw. Uh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Coming up, we're going to have some basketball talk and some NFL talk. The Penalty Box Sports Show here on KFHS Radio. Come on, Ryan. Come on. If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. There we go. You got it. You got it. When you get knocked down, you got to get back up. All right, and welcome back, everyone, to the Penalty Box Sports Show here on KFHS Radio. Some music from Roger Allen Wade in the Jackass soundtrack. In Flames, Soulfly, and Flogging Molly. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Do you like it, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, it's pr- some pretty good stuff. Nice little variety, because I'm so well-versed in music. A variety of jams. A variety of jams. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're diverse, no. Well, you get the point. Right. No. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of concerts to, to go to this summer, definitely for me, uh, Black Label Society, Slayer, and Rob Zombie. Even though Rob Zombie's on the first day of class, but you know what? That's just syllabus day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, on you. let's move on to basketball talk before I get myself in even more trouble. Uh, is the NBA's Northwest Division with Trailblazers, Thunder, Jazz, T-Wolves, Nuggets, is it competitive or just not as good as advertised? Because no one has clinched a playoff spot yet. Uh, I'd say it's competitive. I mean, you got Portland leading the way. 46 and 28. Damian Lillard, one of the most underrated players in the league. Uh, they're winning games. Uh, they're they're eight and two in their last ten as well. So, so yeah, I think it's just a matter of time for the Trailblazers. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. They've been up and down all season long. Seven and three in their last ten so far. But 
I don't know. It's the, I just don't feel the chemistry between George Anthony and I think Westbrook. It, it's with the, the big three in OKC. It's it's one of those things where it might made a bit off more than they could chew. I mean, again, like we talked earlier, how the the Rams have done it right because they're a good team to begin with. Thunder were a good team to begin with, but they all they had last year was Westbrook, and you get all these two star players in. Yeah, it's going to take a while to adjust. I think it's one of those things that would take a year, but then again, Paul George isn't going to be there next year for the Thunder. So, what about the Jazz? Uh, you like Jazz? I don't like the Jazz. I don't. I I, I think they're overperforming this year. They're eight two in their last ten, so that's propelled them high in the Northwest Division so far. I, I just think they're pretenders. T Wolves, kind of under yeah, with, a little bit with Jimmy Butler. Yeah, they're they're a really good team. Yeah, and Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins not happy with his current situation, being the third option on that offense. That's what you signed up for. I mean, when yeah, and do that first, and then complain about your role. But yeah, I think the Timberwolves in the playoffs could be could be deadly. Uh, and by that, I mean maybe win a series. Well, that's deadly enough for a team in the in the the Northwest Division. What what about the Nuggets? Uh. Jokic is their only player, kind of kind of like the Jazz. I think the fact they're over five hundred is a little bit fluky. Uh, but Jokic is a good player. He'll he'll be a cornerstone for that organization. See, with my opinion about the NBA's Northwest Division, it's good. It's just a little bit inconsistent. Maybe I was just focusing on the Thunder a little bit. I think I was focusing on the Thunder a little bit because the Trailblazers, they've been consistently good. They've played good basketball nearly all season. So I think everyone below the Trailblazers is just inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. Can't agree with that one. You're trying to look for something to disagree with, aren't you? No, I'm just looking. I mean, the Jazz and Nuggets, I think, are pretenders. T Wolves are good when everyone's on the court. And yeah, the Thunder just don't have any chemistry, I don't feel yeah. like. So yeah, the Trailblazers are definitely the best team in that. I ordered a, I ordered a Paul George Thunder jersey on eBay because it was so cheap. The guy hasn't shipped it yet. <laughs> the, the little guy <laughs> <laughs> the little guy yeah let's put it that way <laughs> all right which team is is more in jeopardy come playoff time celtics with Kyrie irving's injury or the warriors with steph curry's injury the so, so which injury is is gonna screw the team the most the celtics with ease 100 percent ease with cheese with cheese yes celtics outside of Kyrie irving i mean they've got a couple of good rookies but i mean they don't have gordon hayward who was supposed to propel them over the top uh, and now they don't have their best player, Kyrie Irving. You got to go against LeBron at some point in this playoff. Mm-hmm. And if, uh, and depending on where Cleveland falls, if they fall to three, then that's a second round matchup, Cleveland Boston. So Kyrie needs to get healthy in order for them to beat Cleveland. And, and with the Warriors, it's I mean you have Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green still, uh, three of the four best players in the in the league at their respective positions so yeah i believe the warriors will be just fine even without curry but yeah we'll see. yeah I, I agree with you um warriors can still contend and they won't have to face the rockets in the first round uh, because the rockets will beat the warriors eventually in the playoffs um and you're right you know i don't like to say it but the warriors <laughs> did you just try to slip that in there yes i did i okay how yeah many? of course they're not going to play the warrior or the rockets in the first round they're the one and two they that's won't what meet until the conference final that's what i'm saying that's why they don't have to worry and then about you it slipped in and said the rockets will beat the warriors anyway yeah that's i mean that's my opinion we've already established we established this in the first five minutes of yeah, this episode you're trying to you're trying to slip up and get the last word in i'm not gonna allow that uh, Warriors, Warriors aren't going to beat the Warriors and Sakes. I've, I've Warriors and personally sakes. seen the Rockets play one game. Have you seen the Warriors? No, I have not. Okay, the tickets are too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for a reason because they're the best team in the in the NBA. I think the, the Rockets will catch them on a few bad days, and that that'll be just enough. Yeah, they'll to catch win. them on two bad days. Then you're, Warriors. That's, that's two wins. Warriors. That's yeah, two war- wins. Warriors and six. That's two Warriors wins. and six. No. No. Warriors and six. They'll catch them on two bad games. You already have the advantage. Rockets are going to be better than the Warriors at that uh, moment in time in the playoffs. And then they're just going to get two easy wins. It's not going to be a sweep. I think it's going to be seven games. Rockets and seven. Warriors six. 
All right, which NBA MVP candidate is really the most valuable player in terms of their team success? Who, I mean, who is really the most valuable player? For the last 15 years, it's been LeBron James. Are you going to... Well, I was saying this year, but... Yeah, I mean, just like it has been for the last 15 years, it's LeBron. History proves. I mean, look at that team. Outside of LeBron, I mean, you have George Hill, Ronnie Hood. Can you name any of anyone else? No. J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson. LeBron has always been the most valuable player in the league. He just doesn't always have the stats. Like Westbrook, who can take 40 shots a game and, and well, get those do, triple doubles. He doesn't do that anymore. Not as much. No. Because he's got players around him now. Well, last year, he had to just completely play like a banshee for them to make the playoffs. With LeBron, whether he's the only player on the team or whether he's got two superstars, one superstar, he always makes it happen. Um. Well, I'm going to go with Anthony Davis this year. He was... He was Second, he was second. He was second. He's really a, a kind of a lesser version of LeBron because outside of him, there's not really a whole lot the Pelicans have. I mean, Boogie got injured, and that was just like, oh crap! What are the Pelicans supposed to do? No, <laughs> twenty-eight points per game, eleven rebounds a game, two point five blocks per game. Yeah, I think he's wouldn't mind him winning MVP, but it, we all know it's going to be James Harden. But um, yeah, that would be kind of a, a nice little statement that the NBA would make. But um. Yeah, James Harden definitely is just going to run away with this just based on his numbers. Um, any changes to your draft board after tournament play? Uh, I don't remember what my draft board <laughs> looked like before. That was a while ago, but I didn't make a new one. Okay. Uh, DeAndre Ayton won still. That's obvious. To the Suns. Uh, then we have Luka Dantic, uh out of Slovenia. He's going to Memphis. Okay. Atlanta takes... Marvin Bagley the third, really good showing in the playoffs. Atlanta taking the power forward. Orlando Magic take Jaron Jackson. Watched him play in Jesus. He can attack those boards. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus, <laughs> that's a good way to start a scouting report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what I'm here for. And then at number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Mohamed Bamba. Ooh, Mo Bamba. Yes. And, I mean, with my draft board, nothing's really changed. I mean, yours was fine. The thing that I've come to terms with with Trey Young is he needs to go to a team where he doesn't need to be the instant star. He's kind of like Alonzo Ball. He's very well, Who's raw. the team, then? A team, like, a team like Cleveland. Let's put it that way. Okay, who else is like Cleveland? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, I mean uh, here's the thing. Cleveland maybe, has maybe, the fifth pick. I mean, a lot of people have him going to the Bulls. I could see him going to the Bulls. No. Because I, they're in rebuild mode anyway. You know what? The one I'm looking at right now has the Bulls taking Colin Sexton, the superior point guard in the draft. I think Sexton's probably a better prospect. He's a better player. Better prospect. Same thing. Just all around. He was a better college player. Okay. I think he's a better athlete. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll grant you this. I've kind of hopped off the Trey Young bandwagon a little bit. I'm still hanging on. But Just because of the name. Yeah. Just because of the name. I mean, the thing jersey. is with, with Sexton, he is the the better prospect, better athlete than Trey Young is. Trey Young's still raw, obviously. He's younger than I am. Um, so I think him going to a team that where he doesn't need to be the star or you know, his success isn't really that necessarily that big of a deal. Like with the Bulls, if he has a bad season, he has a bad season. With Lonzo Ball, he went to the Lakers, and his dad made them put the spotlight on him. If he goes to a situation similar to that, where ESPN's always putting the cameras on him, he's not going to succeed. Obviously, because you see, saw yeah, what but Lonzo's having a great year. Well, he didn't start off very well. Okay, That's Jesus what, I'm just Christ! Saying, everyone who was talking garbage on him at the beginning of the season knew damn well. I wasn't that it was talking too early. garbage. I wasn't talking garbage. I'm just saying, if Trey Young went into that situation, he wouldn't be able to do it. Because you saw what happened this season when ESPN and everyone started putting their attention on him. Yeah, maybe because he's not that good of a player. I think he's a good player. I just think that he needs to be in the perfect situation. With the, the right team. Needs so to this one him. has the Knicks taking him. Hmm. Well, I don't. The Knicks are one of the worst run organizations. So I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't condone anyone going to that team. So. I mean, and then, I mean, you have Sacramento at seven. I mean, Trey Young has said that he wants to play for the Knicks. So I mean, I mean, it's one of those situations. I mean, we see some prospects in the NFL, like with Baker Mayfield. I mean, it's kind of a coincidence that they're both Sooners, but. People are saying he needs to go to the right situation for him to succeed. He, you can't just stick him anywhere and expect him to succeed. And I think the same thing falls for, for Trey Young. The right team needs to draft him. The Sixers are 10. 
Hornets 11. Clippers 12. Sixers. Nuggets 13. And then Clippers again. So. Yeah. I mean, am I at least making sense here? No, Trey Young's a borderline second rounder to me. I mean, can't shoot over 40%. It's just tough from tough it, to his range and his ability to his ability to pass is really what's catching a lot of people's eye. It's, it's not just with a shot. Why well, I hope he is. Yeah, it's pretty. Ele- he's an electrifying player. I just think that it's a little, you know, things have kind of died down a little bit since the hype first started. There was a little bit of Lynn sanity in there. You know who else was a dynamic player? Who? Ed Monix. Did you just throw in a semi pro? <laughs> I did, there? yes. Good Lord, that's yes. back in the ABA days because that is based on a true story. <laughs> no, it's really not, but I wish it was. <laughs> Ed Monix. Yeah, back in the ABA days, Ed Monix. I hope <laughs> we need to get Woody Harrelson on the show <laughs> somehow, some way. Shout out. <laughs> and he needs to bring the championship ring. <laughs> All right, well, which college basketball team will be the biggest contenders next year? I don't think this is even a question. Do you have Duke? Yeah. I have Duke, too. Yeah. Is that all you had? Yeah. What? Who else do well, I need I to put, pick? I put K State in there because they're not going to lose necessarily lose anybody. Contender, biggest contender. Well, yeah, the biggest contenders. There's an S at the end. Biggest though, being probably the most important word, would be the biggest contenders. I have Duke atop K State, but I just Jesus. Put two down. So, so K State's number two. No, not and number your two. They're just they're just somebody. Year. No. Okay. Not preseason polls. I just think these that, are biggest contenders. Okay. That that might be a dark horse. Okay, they'll they'll be okay. a five. Okay, K State will be my dark horse. They're they're a five seed. Ryan, this is the penalty saying. box. We don't need to be so. The biggest contenders. I'm talking Duke. Do you think Michigan you're the State, only Villanova. you're the only person who looks that far into my words? I do. Everyone else says biggest contenders. It doesn't say who will be contenders. The biggest contenders. Okay, Niles. Why do you think Duke's going to be one of the biggest contenders? Zy or uh, yeah, Zion Williamson. Okay. Uh, R.J. Barrett and uh, the, the other guy. The other guy. The other guy. Yeah. All right. Final four predictions. Loyal, Chicago versus Michigan. Don Michigan. I'm going with Michigan on this one, too. It. I mean, it's hard. But, it, I mean. It's, <laughs> that sounds like someone getting over a breakup. I mean. How are you doing? I mean, um, it's hard. You know, it's hard. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what that sounded like. I mean, I think Michigan's just... I mean, they're a talented team. They are. I think this... Because now the spotlight's really on Loyola Chicago. It was before that they made the Elite Eight. But now, I mean, I mean it's just... So, yeah, I got Michigan winning this one. You know, I mean, just, you know, it's hard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what about Kansas and Villanova? Villanova. You know... I got KU in this one. Really? Yeah. I didn't really want to. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of them. But, yeah. Yeah, I got Kansas in this one. Um, showed me a little something against that against Duke that they could actually go up against a, not only a great players, but a great coach. So, I got Kansas beating Villanova. So, Michigan versus Kansas for me in the national championship. We have Michigan versus Villanova. Who do you have one in that? And Nova. You have Nova? No, have, it just hasn't. They haven't even been tested. So far in the in the in the tournament, they've kind of run through everyone. I got Kansas winning the national championship. So, you know, I d- I just didn't really want to. You know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> you know, where I have to. You know, okay, NFL talk. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, which teams are now big playoff contenders after the free agency deadline? Uh, the Rams. We yeah, the Rams. About that. Rams. The Rams. Yeah, Rams. Yeah. Vikings. Mm. No, oh, don't mm, me. Mm. They got Kirk Cousins and Sheldon Richardson. They improved. I don't know if Kirk Cousins is the answer. But I think it, it's still, a, I mean, <laughs> you tell somebody, hey, Keith Keenum, you know Case what? Keenum's leaving. Oh, but you, you guys get Kirk Cousins. Oh. You know, you know, I mean, it just doesn't matter. That NFC North, A-Rod. A-Raj. A-Raj. Yeah, A-Raj. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Raj, Raj, A-Raj. A-Raj yeah. number 12. Yeah. Still in that you can't division. say A Rod and expect me to just be like, oh yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I'm a Mets fan. I know what I know what A Rod. <laughs> I'm really a Yankee is. fan. Yeah, I know what A Rod needs. A Rod, A Rod, because it's still Rod. It's but, Rodgers. I mean the Vikings. I mean their defense. Come on, you cannot say that Aaron Rodgers is going to be personal, individually responsible for the fact that they're going to win the NFC North. Yes. No. Yeah, I, I know certainly Vikings, can. Up against the Vikings defense, and keep in mind that they're going to have Kirk Cousins, who even if he is an average player. They still have Dalvin Cook. 
excuse me. They still have some great receivers, but I'm I'm looking at mostly at that defense. Okay, and uh, you think you uh, think I got Aaron Rodgers? Hey, Aaron Rodgers is the best and quarterback the, in the league, the, and the Bears will always have the best player on the on the field. The Bears aren't going to be in the playoffs, but they're going to be better than they were last year. The Lions, yeah, it's kind of iffy on whether or not they're going to show up, but it's going to be a little bit tougher this year for a Raj. I mean, it's going to be ha- harder for the Vikings too, but I think they're going to be able to pull it off because they made the right offseason moves. Did the Packers? No, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so yeah, Aaron Rodgers isn't going to win it. We'll see. We'll see. I, how I the know. Draft goes. I know that that that. We'll see how the draft. That's goes. a tough we'll, pill we'll, to swallow. We'll, we'll, we'll see how the draft goes. We'll see how the draft goes. Keep in mind the Vikings draft too. Yeah, they do. They, they draft. They do. All, so. all thirty-two teams. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, well, moving on from. You didn't do who screwed. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Who screwed? Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. I have the Dolphins in there too, just because it's their quarterback situation is just poo poo. Until they get one in the draft. I mean, even and they have a lot of people have Baker Mayfield going, but even I mean, good lord, I don't really know. It's one of those situations where you just do not. I have no idea what what the Dolphins are doing right now. They lost Jarvis Landry. They lost Nadama Kinsu. I mean, it's just. It, I mean, it's. Eh. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 have to, I have to describe it with a sound because it's just, eh. I just, I don't know. Um, and if they do select a quarterback, you know that they're going to be like, oh, no, Tannehill, Tannehill, Tannehill. So. No, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, moving on from uh, my little, eh, about the Dolphins and, <laughs> and Ryan have to insert Aaron Rodgers into every single conversation. Well, Johnny Manziel playing the NFL again. Now. How will Aaron Rodgers be related in this question? You know, when Aaron Rodgers first came into the league. <laughs> he yeah, Johnny Manziel will play Brett again. Favre. Johnny Manziel will play again. I don't know where, but he's still young enough. He's got a chance. Uh, we'll see it kind of like Michael Vick, who, I mean, obviously different scenarios, but, I mean, Michael Vick took a few years off in the NFL and then came back and was productive. So I think we'll see Johnny Manziel kind of follow that route. He'll get another chance. I think he will, but it will be more as a of a sideshow when they sign him. Um, whoever it is, uh, I don't want to really spit out any examples. But, uh, yeah, I just see him kind of being like a sideshow, kind of like Tim Tebow with the Mets. It's just kind of a sideshow. It's nothing more than that. That wasn't a baseball move, and whoever signs Johnny Menzel, it's not going to be a football move. It's just to get some ESPN vans in your parking lot. We'll see. He'll he'll play in the CFL or, or the yeah NFL. he said he said if he doesn't get signed to the, the NFL he's going to the CFL this year and then the, of course we have the the XFL coming so yeah <laughs> yes okay <laughs> yes 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 no see they kind of dumbed it down though it's not there's there's he won't let anyone play if they're like criminals which sucks it's the XFL oh. it's the extreme football league Nadama Kinsu isn't a criminal and he's still a nasty player. We'll see. Well, you're wanting it to be like the longest yard. I player. am. <laughs> I really do. I'm a prison yards football. Yeah, maybe that's what the American Football Alliance will be. No. Just by the name, you can tell that's not what it's going to be. <laughs> no, Anything with not. alliance in it's not cool. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I guess. All right. Um, what do you think the Browns are going to do with their number one draft pick? Aaron Sam- Rodgers, you know. I mean, just <laughs> Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's pro day was was outstanding. Uh, even Joel Klatt, who not a huge believer in Sam Darnold over the past few months, he said, "Yeah, he's definitely the best quarterback in the draft." Browns take him. That leads us to two. Who has the number two pick? The Giants right now. Giants don't trade it. They should take Rosen. They need a quarterback. They have Eli Manning. He's old. Take Rosen. Groom him. Number three, we have the Jets. Jets again. Gonna take a quarterback. Wouldn't trade a number three if you weren't. They're gonna take. Baker Mayfield. Ooh, you think Baker Mayfield? Well, it sure as hell better not be Josh Allen. And I don't think the Jets are going to move that far up to get Lamar Jackson. So I think that's who they're going to take. Which leads the Browns back to number four. They take Saquon Barkley. They get everyone they want. I think they should train well, him. But if they still have the number one pick, it's going to be Darnold. Given what you've said, um, that makes sense. I stay up at night thinking about these situations. I, I do. I still think. I mean, they will draft Arnold. I still think Barkley is the best draft prospect. Just because he's not. I mean, I know this is going to sound weird, but 
but just because he's not selected number one overall doesn't mean he's not the best prospect. It's kind of a game. Yeah, I don't. The need- Browns are kind of like, okay, we got to pick our quarterback now, or else he's just not going to be there three picks later. Yeah, I don't. I don't <clears throat> think that's how anyone thinks about drafts. So I, I mean, I think Barkley. Sam Darnold is the best in the draft, but him going number one has. I mean, they're not correlated. No, I have uh, Barkley's the best in the draft. Yeah. Okay. You said Darnold. I think Darnold is. You well, say I think Barclay Barkley is. is. Well, and you know you're wrong, but <laughs> you're you're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> well, uh, sir, I may not agree with what you say, but I'll take to the death your right to say it. <laughs> there are so many running backs in this draft. Yeah, but none like Saquon Barkley. Well, none Jesus, like there are Saquon none Barkley. like Nick Chubb either. But or Bo Scarborough. I mean, with Nick Chubb, he's had injury cons- problems, and with Saquon Barkley, he is just. Uh, and um, I think he is the biggest. And baddest draft prospect, draft running pro- running back draft prospect since Adrian Peterson. Okay, but then tell me this. I bring this up every time. Four of the last five Super Bowl champions haven't even had a thousand yard rusher. Running okay. doesn't change the game, passing does. Okay, so you're telling me, let's go back to the Adrian Peterson comparison. If a team had the opportunity to draft Adrian Peterson number one overall when he was selected seventh, what do you think? Depends on what the quarterback situation is. If you have a quarterback well, already, well, well, yeah, sure. Add a compliment. Browns don't have that. They have a short term, Tyrod Taylor, but you got to get that long term. This is the year of the then quarterback. That's a, that's a, the year of the quarterback. You're not going to get one next year. And again, I'm not. I'm not um, saying that they they shouldn't draft Donald number one overall. They should because it's a game. That's how it goes. They're going to have to get him now because either the Jets or who else has a pick, the Giants are going to get yeah. him. So yeah, that's kind of a it, it is draft day, of the movie reference to the movie draft day um but i still think barkley is the is the best prospect in the draft okay he's not gonna have near the impact that a sam darnold's gonna have you think you don't think so no he'll be a compliment as Uh, all running backs are on super bowl winning teams on super bowl winning teams maybe compliments that's all they are let's see i'm trying to let's look back okay yeah there's legarrett blunt and jj yeah, Patriots. When have they ever had a running back for more than five years? No, they haven't. Um, Denver, C.J. Anderson. I think he's good. Definitely ain't elite. There was the Seahawks. Year one of Marshawn Lynch, like five years ago. I don't know if yeah. he had that, that. Might be the only thousand yard rusher. Hey, he was elite. But then guess who beat Seattle? The Patriots. Guess what the Patriots don't Yeah, have. because they didn't run Marshawn Lynch. I win. <laughs> I win. Hey, that's fair. I win. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Running backs are important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. And in one instance, third and one from the one. Second and one from the one. What? Second and one from the one. Oh, yeah. All right. Since you're so gung-ho on Sam Darnold, uh, what makes him the number one quarterback prospect? I agree he's the number one quarterback prospect, but I want to hear your opinion. He's athletic. He doesn't have the injury histories that, like, Josh Rosen do. That Josh Rosen has. He's bigger than Baker Mayfield. And he's a hell of a lot more accurate than Josh Allen. Josh Allen's more of a... He's got a gun. He's more of a Pat Mahomes type of okay, prospect. Okay, but he's still more accurate. Okay. And I, so, I mean, I'm looking at... Uh, looking at Donald's stats over two years. Uh, completion percentage, 65%. 7,200 yards. 57 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. Keep in mind, last year he threw the ball an average of between 35 and 40 times a game and threw 13. So one pass every 35 or so attempts is getting intercepted. It's not terrible when you're asked to to be the offense, especially at USC. That, That offensive line average at best but he made it happen because he, guess what? He had five rushing touchdowns last year. And, fun fact, he had two tackles well, on those interceptions. Uh, off of his interceptions. Off of his it's not exactly a stat that you want to have. It's but fun it's, fact, it's, it's though. interesting. So, yeah, Sam Darnold's got the best of everything out of everyone in this draft. But what about what's between the ears? The leadership. Yeah, the he's, not, he's not flamboyant. He's not going to be a Locker room cancer. Well, none of them are going to be a locker room. How cancer. they are in the locker room, we don't know. We don't see it. 
on the field. He's cool. Well, they, they, do, they do psych- psychological testing at the draft combine. They, they, do. Do, they just don't publish it because that's private. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We don't know what they're like in the locker room. So someone like Baker Mayfield, I don't know. He could be a cancer. We don't know. It depends on the situation. Lamar Jackson, I don't know. I mean, he's pretty good. But, I mean, <laughs> the, the fact that, I mean, he could be a Tebow where a quarterback doesn't work out for him and he's too stubborn to move. I think he should get that chance at quarterback, but that's not guaranteed. If he sucks at quarterback, move to receiver. That's a smart thing. That's a business decision. And then Josh Rosen, of course, is very opinionated. He is. <laughs> and then Josh Allen, okay. I mean, yeah, he's a Wyoming guy. But, again, he's Josh Allen. He's not Sam Darnold. No. All right, do you think the 49ers or Seahawks can compete with the Rams for a division title? We've talked about this multiple times today. I do not think so. Yeah. Rams are Super Bowl bound, especially if they get Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, the Rams might be considered one of the best teams of all time once the season's done. I think they're going to be that good. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think they're going to be that good. I really, th- I think so. I believe that. That's better than the fifteen to one Panthers. Better than the fifteen and one Packers. I said one of the best. I'm talking recently. Those are the recent teams. Okay. Better than the eighteen and zero Patriots. Well, I think that they'll be able. Nineteen. To do, I'll be able to. I'll be, I'll be, I think they'll be able to do something that they couldn't. I think they'll be able to win the Super Bowl. Oh. So. Oh. That's just a, it's my opinion. That's my hot take. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, we're going to take one more break before we get to the top five badasses in sports. That's right. Badasses. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're listening to the Billy Box Sports Show on KFHS Radio, part of the Tiger Media Network. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. And welcome back, everyone, to the Penalty Box Sports Show here on KFHS Radio. That was some of the new stuff from Breaking Benjamin uh, called Psycho. We actually had a, a classic with Chevelle the Red. Uh, that's, a, that's a weird way to transition back <laughs> into that. <laughs> and we had some some stuff off of Judas Priest's new album that was called Firepower. So You didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, i got to stop using that voice. I creep myself out. <laughs> All right, so now top five badasses in sports. This is, gonna, this is a this is a good top five. This is a top five American needs. Don't you agree, Ryan? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I I went recent. I don't know what you did. I went semi recent. Um, with I mean, mine active. I didn't go active, which is which is good. That's why. That's good that you did it. Okay, who's your number five for top five badasses in sports? Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall. UFC. Mm-hmm. He has the baddest spinning heel kick I've ever seen. Connects so fluidly. Rem- did I say balanced? Completely balanced. And then he's got the Kamehameha celebration. Okay. After he knocks someone's ass out. Oh, yeah, that's from Pokemon, right? Stop. <laughs> I don't watch Dragon Ball Z, but I'm not stupid either. <laughs> the people who do watch it are offended. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's, yeah he's, he's definitely in the top five. Well, uh, he- even though he's a UFC fighter, I think number five could still beat him in a fight. James Harrison. No. No, he's a bad dude. Hill. No. no. James Harrison is a bad dude. Nope. Taking your eye Hall. He's, what, 37 and he can still push? He pushed a cart full of, it was like 1,100 pounds of just like weight, and he just pushed it. Okay, cool. That, I mean, he's, you got a, and he's a nasty dude. Yeah, a spinning hill he's probably He's probably put more people's lives in jeopardy than that UFC guy. Yeah, because UFC is not as dangerous a sport as football. Well, to an extent. All right. Number four? Yeah, number four. Who's your number four? Zdeno Chara. Zdeno, ooh. It's got to be. Zdeno Chara. Okay. Anyone takes him in a fight, he's going down. I have Nolan Ryan. Okay. <laughs> you cannot disagree with me on this one. <laughs> Do we have to go back to the to the Ventura fight? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, he he was, was it a busted lip or a bloody nose? Whatever it was, there was blood all over his jersey. Didn't want to go out. I think that moment itself, that could have been his only game in Major League history, and he would still be on this list. Maybe. That moment itself, I mean, that's just badass. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That's, yeah. Yeah. And then what he's... Definitely I mean, deserving. He's uh, with the Rangers. Is he still with the Rangers or is he with the Astros now? Oh, I don't remember. One of the, but either way, he's, he sits outside. He doesn't, he doesn't need no suite. 
Just give him a, pl- a spot right behind home plate. He doesn't need any any sweet. He wants to watch baseball the way it should be watched. You know what I'm saying? Considering we're usually watching it on TV. You're catching it. Where, well, when we go to games, we don't go to suites. No. For a multitude of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just say it's because you want to watch it outside. <laughs> All right. You're number three badass in sports. Steven Adams. Steven Adams. He's a big dude. <laughs> and but he's uh, not he's necessi- got, necessarily nasty. He's He looks badass. Yeah, he looks, but he's not necessarily. I've seen him play. He plays hard. Yeah, he plays hard. I was trying. I was doing one for every sport, and I couldn't think of one in basketball that I really wanted, so I chose Stephen Adams. All right. You didn't choose Dennis Rodman. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, you active. did recent because you're not of a sports historian. Go eat fruit off of a low berry <laughs> tree. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, just I guess I'm going to be the one who has to pull our weight in ter- terms of sports history here. I'm the one who has to reach out to the to the true sports fans out there. Yeah. Not the ones who say, oh, did you see Aaron Judge? And then I'm going to have to be the face people see when they associate the show. Otherwise, they're going to need trash cans. It goes both ways, you see. <laughs> you spend all night thinking of that? <laughs> 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 all right. Well, my number three badass in sports, Ray Lewis. I'm wearing his jersey, man. Got to represent. That Madden intro, Madden 13 intro. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he he was a bad dude too. Kind of like I mean, wasn't quite as dirty as James Harrison, but he would let you know if he hit you hard. That's fact. That's a stone cold fact. So, okay, yeah, bad dude Ray Lewis is. Oh, okay, who's your number two? Uh, for football, I went Luke Keekley. Luke Keekley, he's <laughs> concussion after concussion. He's still out there. <laughs> was it a a meme that we saw or something like that where he's he's just kind of sitting there with. No, it was Colin Coward that bro- brought it up. The fact that he's, you know, seems like such an innocent guy yeah. off the field. You know, he wears glasses. You know, he's just. Eh. But you take once he's on the field, he's just a maniac. Yeah, <laughs> he's just a he's psycho. Everywhere. Yeah, he's everywhere on the field. It's, it's, moment this comes up for me is in the Super Bowl. <laughs> remember that hit he had on a? I can't remember who it was in the Super Bowl. No, I don't remember. It, it was a. It was a ooh. Ooh, it was one of those hits. <laughs> so yeah, like a Brandon Cooks getting lit out. Yeah, just oh, oh no, no one's no one's <laughs> sure if Brandon yeah. Cooks is awake yet. Yeah, it's, it was one of those hits. Um, so yeah, that's not a, not a bad one there. My number two, Mike Tyson. Okay, need I say more? No. First, I don't, think the, I, mean, do. I don't know what came first. I think it was the fact that he said he was going to eat somebody's heart, eat his children, and then he bit somebody's ear off. Then he got a tattoo on his face. Then he was in the Hangover. And, I mean, the countless interviews where he just completely trashes the person interviewing him because they're just disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sold. Yeah, that's, that's pretty badass. <laughs> I'm sold. Yeah. All right, so who is your number one badass in sports? Bryce Harper. Did I hear that right? Are the mics turned up all the way? It's Bryce Harper. You think Bryce Harper is the biggest badass in sports? Right now, yeah. R- yeah. I mean, he's a great player. He's got the charisma. I don't, I don't know if he's a... He's fought. He takes no L's. Well, I mean, he takes no L's well. If we're looking at modern MLB players, I don't know if I'd put Bryce Harper as, as the... Yeah. As the baddest dude. Yeah, I am. Let's see. I'm trying to think of it, some examples. Uh, Gosh. I, I mean, maybe I maybe tell. Manny Machado. No, no. Machado's fought and he's won. <laughs> no, no. You're not going to give me any other options besides Bryce Harper. No, I don't have to. I don't. I don't know, man. Bryce Harper to, 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 to put on the same list as Luke Keekley, Zidane O'Char. Which speaking of Zidane O'Char, he's my number one. Oh, okay. So to put him in the same conversation as as those people that you mentioned, yeah, it's a little insulting. No, a little insulting. Your face is a little to, insulting. To, so. to, well, that that's different. That's why we're in radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I think of people like James Harrison and Ray Lewis, Nolan Ryan, Mike Tyson, Zidane O'Char, and you think of Bryce Harper. Yeah. Why? It's just the way he looks. You just, I, I, I have a joke I want to tell, but I can't. Okay, then don't say it. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Blackman. No. Charlie Blackman's a pretty bad dude. Yeah, but he's not as good as Bryce. Well, it doesn't matter if he's it, good. Harper's got the the swagger. Mike Trout's almost gotten in a few fights. No, he has not. He almost did with Ventura. No, no. Yeah, he did. He got his face. That's different. 
It was almost a there's fight. A, there's, a, there's a long line between... But people have there's a, a lot of space between getting in someone's face now, and throwing again, fists. Again, yeah, Mike Trout doesn't quite have the temper that Bryce Harper does. That's not a knock on Bryce Harper. It's just, it's just a fact. So, yeah. Again, little, you're little, wrong. Little surprised. Now, now that baseball season started, are we going to have Bryce Harper in every conversation instead of Aaron Rodgers? Or are you going to? Yeah, summon? I think I think this season of all seasons would be the one. Or, or is it going to be? You're still going to try and plug in Aaron Rodgers? Like I talk about the Brewers. Oh, you know, speaking of a great athletes in a, in, a, in in that area. Um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers. He's, he's close. Yeah, to Yeah, I mean that's what I do. I mean I bring I bring well, the news update, to, I bring the news updates on all of the sports world's best players. You don't bring news updates. You just try to plug in Bryce Harper yeah. and Aaron Rodgers to every conversation. Hey, they deserve to be. All right. <laughs> well, on that that note, that'll do it for this week's edition of the Billy Box Sports Show. Ryan, I'm going to shut off your mic. Is that okay? <laughs> You're off. The mic's off. <laughs> if you want more, then uh, subscribe to the Penalty Box's YouTube page or like KFHS Radio on Facebook. Um, really, that's about it. Uh, close the show a little bit early, but that's okay. Still got plenty of daylight outside. Uh, for my colleague, Grind Sabata, I'm Boomer Sabata saying goodbye, everybody. <laughs>